Are you having fun in your business? I mean, it should be fun, right? Well, sometimes the fun gets overlooked when you're dealing with the have-tos, the complexities of being your own boss and actually running the show. It's my goal that this, the Fun Business Fun Money Podcast, can help reignite your spark of fun by providing tips, tools, insights, and inspiration so you can enjoy running your business in the simplest, easiest, most fun way possible. I'll be sharing practical tips and ideas that you can implement immediately, along with business and money mindset insights to keep you moving forward no matter what's going on around you. I'm your host, Deirdre Amies, the fun business and money coach and founder of Powered by Personality. Let's play. Hey there, and welcome to the Fun Business Fun Money podcast. Today, we're diving into a really juicy topic, which will help you take your money-making abilities to the next level and beyond. And I always feel like Buzz Lightyear is around here somewhere when I say that, like with to infinity and beyond. Just my weird sense of humor. Also, side note, if you can hear crows in the background of this podcast, that's just all the crows around my neighborhood have decided to settle in a tree just outside our house and have a party. So there's that. Now, this theme of being the breadwinner and feeling emotionally ready to make more money is something that came up recently on a call with an amazing client. I just love her. And it's such an important thing that I wanted to bring it out into the light here on the podcast as well. There's a lot of weight and pressure around this idea of being the breadwinner in your family, whether that's a traditional family or just the amazing group of people that you consider to be your family. Let's just throw traditional beliefs about what a family is right out the window here, shall we? The reason that that's important is that most if not all of my clients identify as female or non-binary, which means in most cases, they've come up against privilege and traditions around who is or who can be the primary income earner or breadwinner. Now, I know plenty of people will shrug and wonder what the big deal about that is. And that's okay. This episode probably isn't for you but it could help you understand a different perspective on what those around you are dealing with so you can be more supportive as they step up with more confidence to be a leader in their own life and become the main breadwinner. If you look back through history, you can clearly see that females and non-binary people have been raised to be the support act, both at home and at work. We're mothers, carers, secretaries, assistants, nurses. It's a big deal for a woman to be a CEO, a CFO, or even the leader of a country. And those that do step up to those kind of positions are subjected to so much more criticism and scrutiny than their male counterparts are. It's like, how very dare you want to lead. The very idea is preposterous and it shouldn't be. But what if you have to lead? What if your circumstances change? You thought you had more time to prepare, but suddenly it's now. The thing is, women weren't legally allowed to be financially independent until the past 50 years or so. They couldn't open a bank account without a husband or father co-signing it. They couldn't take out a mortgage or rent a house without a spouse. So many women would remarry quickly. Perhaps their husband had died or they'd divorced because they couldn't financially support their children or their families because there were all these restrictions on them purely based on gender. And it's not that they necessarily wanted to be dependent. They simply didn't have the option available. So they did what they had to do. 
And honestly, it blows my mind to think about that ever being a reality. Yet here we are still coming up against these biases now. And it's playing out in real time for non-binary people, basically anyone who identifies as different. It's like, okay, now it's your turn. Let's see how badly you want this. If you can keep it up long enough, we might make some changes and give you a little bit of room. But don't hold us to that, okay? That's how I see the patriarchy looking at it. And that comes from a place of privilege. Those who have more power and influence compared to everyone else. We're seeing a distinct shift in recent years where anyone who hasn't had access to the same privilege as so many others, or they've had to fight for equality in some way, they're now standing their ground and saying, no more. I am so done with this. They're taking back their power in the most incredible ways. They're starting a business, walking away from traditional employment. They're choosing their own path in life instead of simply accepting that things are as they've always been. And while that's incredibly scary to actually do it in so many ways, I want you to know that if you've got even the slightest inkling that you were meant for something bigger, better, or more than the path that society has you on, I'm here for you cheerleader for everyone who is stepping up, taking action, and dreaming big. I see you out there doing things, sharing ideas, and becoming more of who you were always meant to be. And I am so damn excited for you. Nothing makes me prouder or happier or more excited than seeing people step up and become the breadwinner for you and your loved ones. And as I said before, in some cases, this is happening because there's no other choice and it really sucks to be pushed off that cliff before you're ready. For others, they've got the time and space to develop and grow into the mindset of being the primary income earner, but that still takes some work. And that's what I want to talk about today, helping you feel ready to be the breadwinner. There's a lot to unpack here, and there's some practical elements that play a big part in this as well. So that's why I've decided to split this topic into two episodes, because otherwise we'll be here for an hour. Today, we're looking at the mindset and the emotional side of being the primary income earner, the leader, the breadwinner. And in next week's coaching episode, we'll take a look at the practical elements that you need to implement or consider as you make it your reality. Honestly, it doesn't matter what level you're at right now or what your situation is. Every single one of us, me included, is more than capable of earning so much more through our businesses. The biggest thing that stops us me included, is our mindset and the emotions around what we think we're worthy of earning. And again, that comes from generations of conditioning to be the support act. We're not worthy or capable of being the leader, except we are. We've just been told a story. Just know that this is an ongoing process. This is never done. So let's just get on and do the work to be better each and every day than we were the day before. In a nutshell, you need to have the mindset of someone who makes the money you want to be making long before you actually achieve that goal. It's all well and good to say, I want a million dollar business or a six figure business, whatever your goal might be. You've got to upgrade your mindset before you can upgrade your bank balance. So let's dive into these mindsets of feeling ready to be a breadwinner. The first one is decide to step up. 
Yeah, that's it. Just decide. It really is simple. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. Do you want more in life, business, money? Cool. Decision made. You wanting more is a sign that you're meant for more. You're never too old to achieve more. Now, I can't recall the exact wording or who even said it, but there's a saying around, if you're not growing in some way, you're dying. And that's what staying where you are in the comfort zone ultimately is. It's a long, slow death of unrealized potential. Ugh, that sounds terrible. So let's not do that. There's so much fun and enjoyment to be had in the growth, the learning, and the challenges that are out there waiting for you when you decide that you're stepping up and doing the work to make it happen. So let's declare it out loud right here, right now. Repeat after me. I choose to step up and be the breadwinner. This vocalization matters because you're putting your thoughts out into the world. You're giving life and energy to it. If you're feeling a different kind of energy in your body as you say it, as you're saying it, pay attention to that. What is that feeling? Does it feel exciting? Does it feel scary? If it's a weird, angsty kind of feeling where the mind gremlins creep in and try to take you out, as you say, I'm choosing to step up and be a breadwinner, you can stop that immediately with some quick tapping or EFT, emotional freedom technique. It's a simple but effective tool to calm your nervous system and stop your mind from spiraling into all of those negative doom and gloom thoughts. I did a whole episode about tapping a while back. So when you're done with this episode, hop on back to number 24 from March 2023, which is titled How to Release Negative Energy and Turn Your Day Around. You'll find the link in the show notes and in the description as well. The second mindset shift is around negative consequences. Now, I'm an eternal optimist. I will always find the bright side of any situation. And trust me, there's been some doozies and I'm the little ray of sunshine. But it's also a really smart idea to be aware of the negative consequences of being the breadwinner. What are the consequences of making more money? The positive ones are obvious. There's more fun money to enjoy everything you want in life to have less stress. Basically, you can do whatever you want when you have more money. The negatives aren't quite so fun, but they're also necessary to consider. More money means more visibility, more responsibility, more demands on your time. What will people say when they discover that you make more than your spouse or partner? How will your spouse or partner react or feel about it? What kind of responsibility will you have to add to your life? Will you feel supported or are people likely to tear you down? And what are the tax or legal obligations of making more money? I want you to write down all the thoughts that come up for you when I say, What will happen if you're the breadwinner and make more money? Even the most ridiculous things that you know will never happen or really don't matter, those things are important. All of those thoughts play a part in how we step into this identity of being the breadwinner. This is something else that you can tap on as well. Take whatever thoughts come up and tap through the points as you say them out loud. And my list usually ends up with me laughing at the ridiculousness of it all. And I always feel so much lighter about it in the end. The third thing is to get emotionally ready for more money. This is a big one. 
if you're not emotionally ready to make that money and become the breadwinner, you're more likely to feel weird or guilty about it, especially if it happens relatively fast for you. If you think of all those people that you've heard about over the years who they're just going about their average income lives and suddenly, bam, they win the mega lottery and they have hundreds of millions of dollars in their bank account. In most cases, they have no idea what to do with it. They don't know how to handle it. And they end up losing it all fairly quickly. Those people were not emotionally ready for more money and certainly not that amount of money. We all like to think that that wouldn't be us, right? But the reality is most of us are unprepared for a major positive change in our financial situation. We prepare for the worst case scenario. If this thing fails, I'll go get a job. I'll borrow money from somewhere, whatever it takes to keep my head above water, which is great. You need to also prepare for a large inflow of money into your life and business. For now, though, I want you to know that I have absolute confidence that you, every single one of you listening, is capable of creating the results that you want. So let's make sure you're ready to receive it with open arms. An increase in your income means that you're on a new level. You have this new status as a high income earner and the breadwinner. And that brings a whole bunch of new emotions that can trigger some unwanted behaviors. Now, that's just three mindset challenges that come up when you start to consider what it might mean to be the breadwinner and making more money than you've ever done before and more money than anyone else in your family, maybe even for generations. That's a big deal. I'm sure you're familiar with the term imposter syndrome, and that is a very real thing around money. We have thoughts like, oh God, who am I to earn that much money? People will figure out I'm an imposter who really doesn't know anything, and they'll demand a refund. And there's a thousand other variations of the same kind of thinking, that you're somehow not good enough or not worthy of being a leader, not worthy of making more money, all the things. Again, that's tied in with generational conditioning. Every single one of us can think of a person who said something that took us out of the game. It could have been a parent, a teacher, a sibling, a random kid at school, a co-worker, a boss, a potential boss in an interview situation who told you your, your income aspirations were way off base. Anyone can say something that will trigger thoughts and feelings of not enoughness. It's so important to strengthen your mindset and step into this identity of being the breadwinner so that you can actually become the breadwinner. Now, if you're familiar with Gay Hendricks' book, The Big Leap, You'll know all about upper limits and how we're ultimately holding ourselves back from achieving success. And it's up to us to overcome that mindset and smash through the imaginary upper limit of what we think we're worthy of earning, having, saving, spending, all of it. And this is why I also keep bringing it back to the money archetypes, because When you understand your personality traits and how they influence your relationship with money, you can change what's not working. So achieving the success you want feels easier and more in flow than a battle or a struggle. Now, if you want to know more about the money archetypes, hop on back to episode three, which is called Unlock the Power of Your Money Personality. That's where I explain the traits and characteristics of all eight money archetypes. It's fascinating stuff. At least I think it is. You can find out your money archetypes by taking my Sacred Money Archetypes quiz. 
You'll find the links to both the podcast episode and the quiz in the description and in the show notes. Being the breadwinner doesn't have to be hard work, but the work does start in your mind. A big part of the work that I do with clients is around mindset. In fact, it's in everything that we do. Helping people to step into a more empowered way of being, doing, and having the things that you want. And I love the shift in energy that happens when they realize how easy it can be, how they've been overcomplicating things, how amazing it can feel to have clear boundaries and standards in not just their business, but in their life. Setting the prices for your work or even negotiating a pay increase in your job becomes a lot less stressful when you know your value because you've already stepped into this mindset of earning that money. The rest is just a matter of time and formality. So that's what I got for you today. Get yourself emotionally ready to be the breadwinner. The practical stuff, we're going to go into that next week. That is going to feel like a no-brainer because you're already thinking like someone who makes more money than your spouse, your partner, your parents, your siblings, or anyone else in your life. Take care. Have fun saying you're the breadwinner. Write it on a post-it note. I'm, I am the breadwinner. Feel what it's like to have that much financial power in your life. That's how you become ready to be the breadwinner. I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks for joining me. If you found this episode useful, make sure you hit that follow button on your chosen podcast platform so you get the notifications when each new episode goes live and you don't miss anything. If you know someone who would also get something from it, don't be shy, share it with them. One of the best things about being a business coach for online entrepreneurs is helping them make sense of their creative ideas and turn them into a simple, clear business system that actually makes money. A client recently described me as a castle building expert. You've got the big vision and some of the building materials already but you don't quite know how to bring it all together into a solid foundation. Then I come along and I show you the blueprint that makes sense of it all. I love that analogy. And I'd love to show you your personalized blueprint, the one that's just right for you and your clients. But I can't do that until you join Ignite, my business and money coaching program. So head on over to deirdreamies.com forward slash ignite for all the details. Fill out the application form and let's talk about building your castle in the simplest, easiest way possible.